and welcome to episode 62 of the Noble Character Crafts podcast. My name is Amy and I am coming to you from Eastern Nebraska where I live on a farm with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, April 12th, 2019. This is a podcast all about my crafty life and today I have knitting, crocheting, and hand dyed yarn to share with you all. Thank you so much for joining me. A huge welcome to new and returning viewers. I really appreciate you joining me and I hope that you enjoyed this episode. You can find me online on Instagram and Etsy at Noble Character Crafts. You can find me on Ravelry at Noble Character. And I also have a group for this podcast in Ravelry under Noble Character Crafts Podcast. In that group, you will be able to find the show notes for this episode as well as previous episodes. You can also get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. And I will have links to all of the places that you can find me in the description box below. Last time I recorded an episode, I announced that I had a giveaway to give away, which was for a beautiful pattern by Hilda Sorum called the Frosty Waves Poncho. And thank you so much to each of you who entered. I am glad to announce that the winner for that beautiful pattern is Nina1989 on Ravelry. She is from the Netherlands, so congratulations. I assume your name is Nina, and I hope that you really enjoy that pattern. I will get in contact with Hilda and have her go ahead and forward it on to you through your Ravelry account, so be looking for that in your inbox, and congratulations to you. And again, thank you so much, Hilda, for generously donating that beautiful pattern to the podcast. I appreciate it so much. Today I am wearing my Birdie Fair Isle Cardigan, which is a beautiful pattern by Hannah Fettig, and I knit this using Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in the worsted weight. And then in my on my dress form in the background, you can see my Brioche Ponchology, which is a beautiful design by Suzanne Summer, and I knit that using Noble Character Crafts yarn worsted weight as well. Two different bases. Um, both my Caring base and my Lenora base are in that garment, and I really love that as well. So I have a finished object to share with you all this week. I was able to finish the Radiant Rays blanket, which is a free pattern by Yarnspirations on Ravelry. And here it is. I used Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend Yarn in the Driftwood colorway. And each of the cakes of this yarn comes in, it comes in 200 gram cakes, and I used almost three cakes. This is how much I had left over. I did make the, um, I did make the blanket a bit smaller than what the pattern recommends. The diameter for this blanket is about 40 inches across, but the original pattern calls for you to knit or crochet it until it measures 27 inches in radius, so from the center out. And so this one is only measuring 20 inches from the center out to the edge. Um, so it's quite a bit smaller than the original pattern, but I thought it was a good size for a baby blanket, especially if a baby ends up carrying this blankie around, they probably, you know, it's, it's gonna be more handy to have it this size, I thought. So I thought I would stop before I needed to use a fourth cake of yarn as well. I thought it would just be a good time to stop. So I really, really enjoyed this project. It was so fun and relaxing to make and such an interesting design. It started from the center, as you can probably assume, <laughs> and if you tuned in last week, you will have seen that it, you make a bunch of chain 10, chain or chains of 10 stitches that you then pick up in the end and loop them together into kind of a knitted stitch right here. You can see the rays are made up of these lo loops of chain stitches that are then knitted together, really. And then just along the edge, you 
do three single crochets into the last loop of each of those rays. And so that's what closes them up. And I just really love how that worked up. It is a beautiful design, I think. Now, as you can see, the edges do kind of curl up a bit. I did block this and pinned it down and it does lay a lot more flat than it did originally, but it still does kind of have a tendency to curl in. But I think it's just maybe the nature of the design. I don't know what else I can do to help that. And I think it's okay. Um, I used a USH five millimeter crochet hook for this project and it worked up so quickly. I think maybe it took me about a week and a half total to make it. So it worked up really quickly and it was so much fun to make. And I have made this for our my church's blanket, baby blanket ministry and part of the prayer shawl ministry, which also includes making baby blankets for new babies in our church. And so this is just going to go into storage for now until a new baby arrives. And I think that it would be a good option for either a boy or a girl. It's nice and neutral and it the yarn is 50% cotton and 50% polyester. So I'm hoping that that will wash really well. Well, I actually threw it in our washing machine um, before blocking it and I just put it in on cold and a delicate cycle and it washed up so beautifully. I did not dry it. I just laid it flat to dry and pinned it down as I said. So that worked out really beautifully, I thought. I'm sure it could be tumble dried without any problems, I would think. Hopefully, because probably whoever this goes to will just wash it in their machine. So hopefully that won't be a problem. But I'm very, very happy with how this turned out. And I really loved the pattern. It was really a lot of fun to make. It was a little bit fiddly at the very beginning because you have so many chains of, you know, loops of chain stitches that are just kind of, I don't know, it's a little bit fiddly at the beginning, but once you get going and get into more of the body of this, where you have more of the actual double crochet stitches making up the majority of the blanket, it's very enjoyable to work up and it worked up really quickly. So I am so happy to have that completed. Okay, on to works in progress. My first work in progress is in my beautiful Tanny Casey project bag and it has an enamel pin on here from Twill and Print. And in here is my Brioche Luscious shawl, which is a beautiful design by Andrea Mowry. And I have been working on this for several weeks, <laughs> months, I think, probably, I'm sure. I don't remember when I cast this on. I should check to see how long have I been working on this because it has been a long time. <laughs> I will not dwell on this project too long because I have shown it so many times, but it is coming along. Here you can see how it's coming. I am currently working on this beautiful applied border that is made in a brioche stitch and it's absolutely gorgeous. I really, really love it. I am using all of my own hand dyed yarn for this Noble Character Crafts yarn in four different colors. My Bear Lambs colorway, my Black Knight colorway, this is Insight, and this is Silent. And these are all on my Pitter Patter base, which is fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. There are a few areas where I had a little bit of the Knight colorway, the black, on my Twinkle Toes base, which has Gold Stellina in it, but for the majority, it's all on my Pitter Patter base. This Progress Keeper right here from Amanda of Little Bitty Delights is marking where I was last week when I recorded a podcast, and I have been able to make this much progress, which I'm happy with. I'm almost, here's the stitch marker marking 200 stitches. There are a total of 421 stitches uh, along the border. So I'm almost halfway across, which is great. <laughs> I did put this down for a few days this week, so I didn't work on it quite as much as I have in other weeks because, well, actually because I made a mistake. I had, right after I got done recording that last Friday night, I made a mistake in the border somehow, and I was just like, 
devastated because I was so nervous about how I was going to fix it because of course brioche is quite difficult to fix. So I had to, I ended up ripping back a few rows and my, that's stressful <laughs> to try to rip back and brioche and keep track of what row I'm on because you really have to keep track of what row you're on when making this pattern for the applied border. And anyway, thankfully, I'm so thankful that I was able to fix it. And then I got a very surprising and wonderful message from one of the podcast viewers who would like to remain anonymous. But she sent me an email saying that she was sending me a set of DPNs so that I could complete the applied border using DPNs as is recommended in the pattern. And it makes it a lot easier to work up this pattern without having to slide the stitches back and forth. Um, if you're using regular circular needles, you have to move your stitches back and forth. But if you use a DPN, it is so much easier. So that was a huge surprise. I mean, of course, totally unexpected that I would receive a set of DPNs in the mail from one of the viewers of the podcast. And I'm so very thankful. So thank you again for thinking of me. And in fact, I even had another viewer after I received an email from the lady that sent me the DPNs, another viewer of the podcast offered to send me a set of DPNs as well. So thank you, you guys. That's just incredible. I'm so touched by your thoughtfulness. It's just so nice of you to think of me. Um, if you have been watching for a while, you may remember that when I first started the applied border, I did try to use DPNs. However, I didn't have a set of US for 3.5 millimeter DPN needles, which is what I am using. I had a set of US 5 um, what would those be? 3.75, I believe. Yes, 3.75 millimeter needles. And that's what I had originally tried to make the applied border with, but it wasn't working when I was first starting out. It was too fumbly, or it, I was getting messed up in starting that applied border using DPNs. So I started, you know, I went back to the regular circular needles and got started. And I thought once I got going, it would be nice to try the DPNs. But at that point, I didn't want to switch to it back to the US-5 because I thought that the gauge would be too noticeable. And anyway, so I didn't have a set of US-4s. And anyway, so that is why the viewer offered to send them to me. And I'm so, so very grateful. So anyway, I have this beautiful set of Chagu US-4 3.5 millimeter DPNs now and it also came with this little stitch holder <laughs> in the package as well so that was so nice I am just very very grateful for <laughs> that beautiful gift anyway it is making an incredible difference to have the DPNs I, really I only use one DPN for this but it just makes such a huge difference it goes so much faster and it's so it's wonderful to use the DPN so I highly recommend that if you ever make this pattern to get a set of DPN so that it will be much easier to add this applied border so now that I am on a roll with using the DPN I think that I'm hoping that this will work up quite a bit quicker We'll see, <laughs> we'll see how I do. I hope I don't make any more mistakes because my, that was stressful. So I'm a little bit, I, I find myself being a little bit more tentative now as I'm knitting on this because I really don't wanna make another mistake because, oh my, I mean, ripping out any knitting is stressful, but ripping out brioche is just like the extreme, <laughs> I think, in my mind, that's, that's the extreme stress of Oh my goodness, I hope I don't mess up this entire thing and have to start over again. Anyway, I'm so thankful that I was able to work it out. And I can't tell where it was, so I'm sure that the recipient will be able to tell either. This is going to a lady that I go to church with, and it is a surprise gift for her. So I'm so anxious to give it to her. I cannot wait to give it to her. So I'm really gonna just continue plugging along on that <laughs> hopefully it will make I'll make a lot more progress on it this week 
My next work in progress is in this cute little project bag that I received in one of the advent mini skein swaps that I did at Christmas time. And in here is a pair of stripy socks that I'm making for myself. I don't feel like I've made a ton of progress on these this week, but I did, I was able to finish the heel flap and turn and I am almost done decreasing for the gusset. So this beautiful progress keeper here is from Million Dots, beautiful blackberry. And that is marking where I was on the heel flap. I did an eye of partridge heel flap and yeah, I was able to finish that and I am like I said just working on the decreases for the gusset I think I have I don't know there's a few more rows I need to go through before I'm done with that but I cast on 64 stitches using my pitter patter base on my deep waters colorway and I knit 20 rows of three by one ribbing for the cuff the main body is knit using Knit Picks Felici in the Hawaiian shirt colorway. I started off using a seed stitch pattern for the first set of, or the first repeat of six rows here in the stripes. And then I discovered that that seed stitch was making a very loose fabric. And so I wanted to tighten that up so it would fit my foot a lot better. And so I switched to a three by one rib for the remainder of the leg. As I said, I did a eye of partridge heel. The yarn that I used for that was one of the mini skeins that I received in my advent, in one of the advent calendar swaps that I did at Christmas time again. And I really love how that coordinates with the striped yarn. I am using US 1 2.25 millimeter needles for these. And this is, again, my mindless knitting that I have, you know, to take with me if I need to travel anywhere. But this week, we haven't traveled anywhere because we have had two flat tires on our van. We were supposed to go somewhere on Monday, and I had to cancel that because we had a, well, just a low tire, but it did need to be repaired. And I didn't want to travel with all five of our children in our van with a low tire. Then I had a dentist appointment for two of our children on Tuesday that I had to cancel because the tire was in the shop getting repaired. And then we were supposed to go somewhere yesterday and I had another flat tire. Ridiculous, living out in the country on gravel roads. We end up getting nails in our tires quite frequently and the gravel road is pretty hard on tires. So we have about five miles of gravel that we travel on. So anyway, it's pretty rough on the tires, I guess. I don't usually have quite so many tires, but it isn't rare that I have a flat tire. So anyway, we haven't got anywhere this week. So maybe that's why I feel like I haven't made a ton of progress on these. And really they weren't mindless for a little while while I was doing the heel turn and everything. And now that I'm on the gusset stitches decreasing, I still have to kind of keep track of it. So it's not quite so mindless, but it will be again soon once I'm done with the gusset decreases. Anyway. I started, after I finished the first, the blanket that I showed you, I really wanted to make another blanket that is a little bit more colorful. And I had my eye on another, another free pattern on Ravelry. It is called the Grandmother's Flower Garden Quilt by Jess Copham. And she is known as the Make and Do Crew. She has a blog and I believe that's what she is on Instagram as well as Make and Do Crew. I am holding this project in a Land's End bag, that a tote bag that has my monogram on there that I was gifted quite a while ago from one of my old bosses. Anyway, it works well for all of the yarn that I need for this project. She recommends using um, Lion Brand Mandela as well as I think she uses a Lion Brand Cupcake yarn. And I got two different cakes of the mandala in the Troll colorway and the Chimera colorway. And she recommends getting two cakes. I believe she uses two cakes for hers as well. And then these cakes, I'll insert a picture here so that you can see what they look like originally. 
and as you can see there's lots of different colors in here and she recommends that you then take apart the cake and wind it in to several different balls of each of the different colors that is in each cake. So I'll insert another picture here so you can see all of the different colors that are going to be used in this blanket as they are rolled up into their little balls there. And that really helps so that you can have a colorful blanket that has, you know, lots of fun colors in it, but you don't have to go out and buy a full skein of each of those colors. You really don't need a ton of each of the colors that go into this blanket. So that's why the mantle is really nice to use because you can get a bunch of different colors and not a huge amount of each color. So that's what I'm using. And I, again, am using a USH five millimeter hook for this project. And here are the, oh, and the white that I'm using is a Bernat Baby Sport in the white colorway. I got two big skeins of this. It's a very large. I don't know if I'll need both, but I just grabbed two while I was at the store. And all of this yarn is 100% acrylic. Again, this will be going, this baby blanket will be going to our church ministry, um, you know, for new babies. And so it's nice to use a very washable material for these blankets. Uh, anyway, this skein is 300 grams and it is actually, well, it's called sport, but it is labeled as a DK weight. And that's what I thought it was too. And the Mandela yarn is also labeled a DK weight yarn. So anyway, here are the first two that I have made up and I am, as you can maybe guess, I am attaching or joining them as I go. Uh, I when I rolled up all of those different little balls from the two cakes, I had 23 different colors, and each motif requires six different colors to make up the motif. And I'm also going to be adding in white to include in the motif as well. Um, so I will have a total of 24 different colors, and that will make six or four different motifs using all 24 colors. I'll be able to make four different motifs. And so then I'll, you know, rearrange the colors as I go along. But I liked how that just divided into the motifs evenly so that I'll have, you know, a nice even distribution of all the different colors. Anyway, I really loved making these first two. However, I'm not happy with how they're laying. I don't know if you can see this very well, but this row right here is uses a popcorn stitch and that really seemed to I like the texture that it adds as you can see it really stands up but I don't like how the motif is just not laying very flat and I really didn't like that like especially here in the middle it just kind of kind of got it I don't know it's just kind of wobbly and goofy looking I think and I don't know if that's how the original pattern is and hers it didn't look like it. It looked like her motifs were really laying flat, but both of mine are the same. And maybe, I don't know, maybe my gauge is a little off for hers, but I just didn't like how it was so goofy looking <laughs> as far as how it was laying. I just didn't like how it was laying flat. So I started making up a third motif. Here it is and I changed that popcorn stitch row which is right here in this turquoise color I changed that to be instead of the original pattern calls for two popcorn stitches in each chain one space from the row below and then it had a chain one stitch in between each popcorn stitch I believe instead on that row which is the one two three four fifth round I decided to just do six double crochets in each chain one space from the row below. And then I chained one, I believe, one or two. Now I can't remember, but I did put it in my Ravelry notes um, in between each chain six, or in between each uh, six double crochet cluster, then I chained one or two. 
And so that made it lay a lot flatter. And then I also made a change to round six. On round six, as you can see, you would normally be making one of these clusters in each chain one space, but on this section where I have six double crochets, I just made that cluster in between the six. So after three, I skipped over three double crochets and just did it in the middle. And then I chained two, which is a difference from the original pattern. In the original pattern, she only has you cro uh, making a chain one in between each of these clusters on the sixth round. But I found if I did two chains, it was laying a lot flatter. The seventh row is the same, and I will be doing the same for the rest of the border as well. I think that it will lay a lot flatter, and I really like, it's still got a little bit of a wave to it, but I think it's a lot better, and I'm really much happier with the looks of that. So I will be undoing these and remaking, well, really I only have to undo until this row, and then I'll be restitching them using this pattern instead. But I am really happy with all of these beautiful bright colors. I think it's going to make a gorgeous baby blanket, and it's really so much fun. I just love making colorful blankets. They are so relaxing and enjoyable, and I just love them. So I'm really enjoying this project a lot. And I think I, I'm not think I think it won't take me too terribly long to make it because each motif is rather large, as you can see. So I don't think it'll take. I don't know, I'm guessing maybe a dozen motifs. And then also there in the pattern is included the instructions to make a half hexagon as well for the border so that you can make the edge a little bit more even and it won't have as much of a jog in it with the, you know, hexagons not meeting up at the end. So anyway, I think that that will be absolutely beautiful once it's done. So I'm excited about that. So those are all of my works in progress for this week. The last thing that I have to share with you is a set of yarn from my Etsy shop. Every time I record, I like to share a set of yarn that I think would work well in a project together. And the set that I have to share with you this week is these three colors. And I just absolutely love these colors. These are some of my very favorite colors. I love purples and greens. Yeah, but purple is definitely my favorite color. And so I just am so excited about this color combination. In here I have my life giving colorway, which is just a nice tonal deep olivey green. And also my victory colorway is a nice tonal indigo color. And the last one in this set is a new colorway that I am so excited about. This again was a custom order that I received from a customer asking for me to replicate some pictures that she sent to me. So she sent me four different pictures that had color inspiration in them and a few of those had pictures of figs in them. So they had, you know, the outside of the fig with the deep purple and some of the figs even had more of a bright purple skin. And then on the inside, there was lots of red and green colors and tones in them. And then a few other pictures that had just beautiful purple and pinky tones in them was what she sent me for inspiration. And so this is the colorway that I came up with. And as you can see, it has lots of different tones of purple and pink and red even a little bit of a brownish tone in there as well. And then it also has these beautiful specks of green and red in them. And I am just so happy with this colorway. I love it so much. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And I sent a picture of this to the customer and she's very happy with it as well. So of course that makes me super happy. And the funny thing is, I this is the notebook that I have on hand that I keep a list of many of the different psalms and proverbs that I have found to name my yarn after. All of my yarn is named after, inspired from a psalm or a proverb. That's where I get the name for the colorway. And in here I have quite a few proverbs and psalms that I have as, you know, options for yarn that I could dye. And I've had Proverbs 27:18 written down for quite a while, which talks about 
a fig tree. And the verse says, whoever tends a fig tree will eat its fruit. And so I have wanted to dye a yarn that was inspired by the colors that you find in a fig tree for quite a while. And so when she sent me those photos of figs, I was I already knew what I was going to be calling it once I had come up with the colorway. So I was super excited about that. So this is a new colorway in my shop called Fig Tree. And yeah, I'm super excited about it. So I thought that it went really beautifully with these two other colors. It would make a beautiful shawl or, well, many other projects, but typically I think of a shawl when I see three colors together. So anyway, I thought those looked really nice together. All of my yarn is available on all nine of my bases in my Etsy shop at all times and whatever quantity you would need for any project, it's available at all times. And as you can probably guess, I do welcome custom orders at any time. I really enjoy working with customers to come up with new colorways. So feel free to contact me if you have any ideas for colorways that you would like to see in my shop. I would love to work with you. So I think that that's all I have to share with you this week. I hope that you all have had a great week. I really appreciate you joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you would like. I would appreciate that so much. I hope you all have a great week ahead. Bye-bye.